Hey, it's Mike here, and today we're gonna look at a couple stories about people being tricked into eating vegan food without knowing it, obviously. And we're actually gonna be looking at two stories today, the first of which is the one that the title's about, that a girl fed her roommate some vegan bacon and ended up getting uh, criminally charged for it. And then the other one is a more laughable one between a boyfriend and a girlfriend. We'll get to that one. And in case the gears are turning in your head and you wanna be tricking people into eating vegan food as well, uh, maybe you want some better recipes. And that brings me to this plant-based bundle, which is $4,000 worth of material, over 100 eBooks or guides for just 50 bucks. Maybe you're going vegan for 2022, this would really help with that transition, or maybe you just wanna up your already vegan game, or your V-game, new word, coined it. Anyway, it's only available until January 9th at 11 a.m. West Coast US time, or 2 p.m. East Coast US time. Everyone else can figure everything out. Anyway, links below. Let's just go. First off, I just wanna say I completely understand at least the urge to wanna feed people vegan food that would otherwise be eating animal flesh and products. And especially because they already eat vegan food, all the plants that they're eating, unless they're on like a carnivore diet, they're gonna be eating vegan food anyway. It's part of their diet. And it becomes extra tempting because people always say that vegan food sucks. Vegan food doesn't taste that great. But then you know that if they don't know it, in a lot of cases, they're not gonna be able to tell the difference. Perfect example was Glenn Beck. I mentioned this too many times when he did the blind taste test of an impossible or vegan burger up against a beef patty. I would say right. A is a, that's meat, is meat. B is a fake burger. B is the real, bur real burger, A is the impossible burger. That is insane. <laughs> he flipped it, he got it wrong. He thought the fake one was real and the real one was fake. And then of course, the moment they find out it was vegan food, they go, ew, it actually it was gross. It didn't taste good, even if they were raving about it two minutes earlier. So with all that in mind, this first story here is not out of the realm of things that I might have tried. So am I a criminal? Let's get to the article, which is, Posted on Local 12, never heard of it, but it's a pretty straightforward story. So this girl moves into a house with roommates. Apparently she says she's vegetarian, but is kind of cool with them eating meat or whatever, and then says, as a nice gesture, she's gonna cook them a meal including bacon. And as you've already figured out, it was not animal bacon. She said it was animal bacon, but it was actually a soy-based bacon. You may have heard of fakin' bacon, but have you ever heard of chokin' bacon? Chokin' bacon, because she was apparently severely allergic to soy, so when this person who thought they were getting bacon was fed soy bacon, they ended up going into anaphylactic shock. The result was going to the hospital for a couple days, probably racking up enough bills to motivate her to sue the roommate that fed her, that soy bacon, and then she had to pay apparently and like go into debt and lose her school scholarship. I don't know why that happened. So it appears that like short of dying, this was probably the worst case scenario for a vegan trying to feed a non-vegan some vegan food. And this brings me into a little bit of ethics and, and the speculating a little bit about the law that I do not know very much about, but why not? <laughs> the thing that strikes me here is I don't think that that vegetarian girl had any intention of harming the person who thought that they were eating bacon. And it even says, quote, the woman says she has some severe allergies, but didn't mention them when she asked what was in the food. Now the vegetarian girl did plead guilty and there doesn't appear to be any type of court proceedings that were super long or anything like that. But I just have to wonder, would doing this just be illegal in general? And obviously with all of the food pranks that happen all of the time, I'm a little bit doubtful. And in terms of breaking the law, the original article says, quote, food tampering laws vary from state to state. However, according to the Department of Justice, to be convicted of food tampering, it must be done, quote, with reckless disregard for the risk that another person will be placed in danger of death or bodily injury. I think because only an incredibly small portion of the population would have this severe of a reaction to eating soy, that it wasn't a reckless act. In other words, virtually everyone that would be fed soy bacon would be okay. I just don't think you can make a case for an intent to harm here. I mean, think about all of the times that maybe like, Someone's wife might bake them some cake instead of using real butter, they might use margarine or something like that. And obviously they're not gonna be going straight to jail. I also feel like there's something about that physical bacon object that makes it seem worse than perhaps if it was just them pretending they used real butter when they actually used soy butter, perhaps would have had the same response, 
but I don't feel like there would have been as much blame put on the vegetarian girl. I also think it's also really interesting to flip this around from the other perspective and say, what if a vegan girl was fed real bacon instead of soy bacon and had a meat allergy? You know, how would I feel as a vegan about that? The reason that I feel differently about that is because the vegan girl has ethically and publicly stated that she does not include those types of food in her diet when plants, legumes, other beans are very likely a part of that girl who eats the bacon's diet. Now, while I don't think the person that fed the vegan meat should be responsible for a type of allergic reaction that was unexpected that happens down the line, I do think they should be responsible for psychological or emotional damage. And while that might sound crazy to some people, for an ethical system that puts dogs and pigs on the same plane, can you imagine if somebody fed you some dog against your will? If you're somebody that isn't vegan, then clearly you would have some emotional damage. Anyway, I think we've gone deep enough into this one. I just wanna zoom out and say that the only reason this was a problem was because of the medical system in which this person can be charged thousands of dollars for having an allergic reaction and therefore she felt like she needed to get money back and that was the crux of the whole thing. And not to harp too hard, but how expensive those medical bills are creates a major aversion to people going to the emergency room which probably results in roughly 30,000 deaths a year in the US. Okay, now let's get on to the second story, which I think is just a funny one, and that is boyfriend freaks out after realizing his girlfriend was not feeding him real meat. His girlfriend was vegan. From Newsweek, who covered it, she said, quote, he said that he hoped I understood how disappointed he felt that I would tamper with his food like that and that something like this was a serious betrayal of his trust. He said I should have disclosed that none of the food I ever made contained meat. In other words, non-vegan boyfriend was so dense that he was unable to figure out that his vegan girlfriend was not just feeding him real meat and then obviously eating it as well because they were probably eating the same meal. She said he freaked out pretty hard and he normally doesn't freak out about things, which I thought was funny. And it makes me think that it might have been a little bit of cognitive dissonance in action. As I said before, cognitive dissonance can be a little bit mistaken in terms of the concept of somebody's beliefs and their actions not lining up, but it's actually the bad feeling that somebody gets when they realize that those aren't lining up. And so I feel like this guy was freaking out when he realized that all that food tasted good and he didn't even notice. And that means that he doesn't even need to be eating animals to have a good culinary experience. I'm probably reading too deep into it, but just the fact that he didn't ask that there was meat in it, he'd assumed that his vegan girlfriend would be fine going and buying him meat and other animal products, cooking it, and then again, eating it with him for some reason. Thankfully though, in this case, the public commentary appeared to support the side of the girlfriend with one of the users saying, quote, I hate this kind of thing. He ate and enjoyed the food until he learned there was no meat. Give me a break. A breakup is what some other users are calling for. And I just wanna emphasize again that this happens both ways. It's not just a bunch of evil vegans trying to trick people into eating food that didn't cause harm to animals. No, it's you know a case like I've mentioned in the past where that one boyfriend didn't believe that his vegan girlfriend actually had a negative health effect to eating cow's milk products. So he regularly started feeding her milk, cow's milk secretly, and then she got really bad acne. And just because you know me, I have to throw at least one study in sometimes, and there is actually quite a strong connection between acne and cow's milk, as this paper mentions, because it can increase that IGF-1, which boosts the SIBO sites, the sebum producing cells on your face and creates more acne prone skin. Let's just say it's lucky that there were no allergic reactions in either of those last two stories because that could have resulted in legal action apparently. It is worth mentioning that the girl that sued her roommate did seem to express a little bit of guilt in this quote. They said, I know she is an a-hole for lying about food. I wanna know whether I am the a-hole for everything I did after. Because bottom line is I basically screwed a person's life because they put wrong ingredients on breakfast that they made only to do something nice. It's probably a little bit of a tone on that to do something nice part, but uh, you get the idea. But in the end, I think the responsibility should be shared because the girl who had the allergic reaction made no information known about her allergy. No, and unless she really mold over the entire meal, butter on and on, in which case she would have probably seen a package for some vegan bacon, then she might have not done her due diligence. That's kind of a gray area. All right, I wanna hear two things in the comments below. Have you ever 
fed anybody vegan food without them knowing, or has anybody ever tried feeding you meat or animal products without you knowing if you're vegan? And then if there's anybody that's a legal expert out here, I would love to hear what they think about the felony situation with the allergy. You know, am I wrong? Was she right to be charged thousands of dollars and take on the brunt of that responsibility? Anyway, finally, we have that vegan bundle linked in the description below again, four grand worth of vegan eBooks and guides for just 50 bucks done on January 9th. And as usual, feel free to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.